uh, transformation of a particular business process. And uh, that business process uh, was uh, implemented in uh, our company, Reliance Industries Limited. Uh, so the Reliance Group, uh, which is one of the Fortune 500 companies uh, with, uh, with the revenues more than 66 billion US dollar, and the la largest private sector company, in the last th three decades, uh, we have put up mega projects, and for each project, project after project, we have improved our benchmarks. And those benchmarks are improved because there is a continuous transformation uh, you know, in various areas. Now, we are part of uh, Reliance Project Management Group, and this particular group executes all the projects for uh, you know, Reliance. And these projects are mega scale projects, uh, world class, and uh, uh, you know, very, very complex projects, uh, which are having a variety of uh, projects, execution models. And th there are various uh, challenges which are actually attached to these uh, you know, various models that we actually uh, follow while executing the projects. So how do we transform with help of IT? And for that, there is a group. Uh, which is uh, actually working on the you know, various frameworks and uh, uh, the uh, IT and automation of business processes. We are part of that. So with that, I think uh, I'll uh, go ahead and uh, thank you, Sam. Harish. Last year, I was talking about, uh, in the same forum, I talked about uh, engineering, how we actually transformed our engineering process. Uh, this time around, the next phase of the project, which is procurement, I'm talking about the EPC project. Uh, the procurement part, I'm going to talk about the pre-PO, uh, that is right from specification generation up to the final bids and uh, you know, the commercial bid evaluation. Now that process is quite complex in nature, how it looks like uh, in, in a typical scenario. The flow that, that was there earlier, uh, was like this. Now, there are various players in a particular mega project. Uh, there is a party called uh, Detail Engineering Consultant. Now, this DEC could be either internal to Reliance or uh, that party could be outside. There could be multiple DECs working on a mega project. Then there is Reliance. Now, when we talk about projects like Jamnagar Refinery, what we have uh, you know, executed in the last uh, six years, uh, that refinery was having one multiple Reliance project management teams. Uh, and then we have, uh, of course, the suppliers. Now, how they actually uh, work together? Uh, you know, it's a, it's a to and fro sort of exchange of information uh, where uh, the DECs, they start with uh, the, the specifications, which is like technical specifications. And these technical specifications are given to uh, Reliance uh, procurement, uh, procurement team for them to raise a purchase equation SAP uh, because all our uh, POs are placed through SAP and, uh, and PR is required for that. What is next is that uh, all the commercial attachments are attached to uh, these technical MRQ copies and there is a covered note. Now, what happens that these uh, entire RFQ is supposed to go to various uh, suppliers, and so there are multiple such copies uh, which are created. So those copies they go to the uh, the suppliers, and the suppliers come back with their technical offers, the uh, unpriced commercial offers, as well as the commercial priced offers. The technical offer. It goes to the DEC because they take care of the technical part. The commercial part goes to the Reliance procurement team members. And of course, there is a copy to Reliance uh, for each and everything that is happening between supplier and the, and the DEC. Now, that's not the end. I mean, once the uh, offers are received, there are queries which are raised. And those queries could be technical in nature or it could be the commercial query. Now, for all these things, we use various media, and those media are either CD, if the size of the data is too, too large, we use CDs. If it is uh, too small, then it's uh, email. 
or sometimes it could be a meeting or you know those kind of things which are recorded in the minutes uh, minutes of meeting so quite simple but then there are quite a few things which we found that you know we can improve on this what are those things and uh, and then we said okay let us take the challenge where we want to transform this transform this uh, pre peer process uh, this entire thing is, is if you have seen all this data is transferred through couriers and those couriers uh, going from you know one one end of the globe to the other side uh, you know the dc is somewhere the supply is uh, located somewhere so there is a lot of time taken in exchanging this information so the first uh, objective is to improve the overall turnaround turnaround time the second thing the data that was there uh, exchanged through emails or couriers or any such medium uh, was not structured anywhere it was like you know flowing here and there i mean th though in disciplined way but it was not in a particular single platform so we wanted to have that in a you know in single location where everybody can refer to it consolidate everything into a single medium where you know, with a with version control so that everybody looks into the right information at right time single point of truth and because it's a quite a sensitive information that we exchange in the pre po uh, process uh, the access control was supposed to be the uh, you know most stringent and the pro these projects are quite you know as, as we all know the projects are always dynamic in nature and when we talk about the mega projects when we talk about various uh, execution methodologies this particular platform was supposed to be the flexible one which we can configure rather than you know uh, just uh, every time change the codes so these were the challenges and of course the last one and not the least is a simple ui so that we don't have to train all these users the suppliers across the globe or dcs across the globe they should be navigating through the system on their own with just a one or two page uh, of guide user guide so eliminate hard copies uh, other media such as cds and all and all the information available online so this is uh, what we took up so there were various alternatives how we actually uh, you know do all this but then uh, we chose documentum 6.6 content server which is a heart of documentum uh, suite of products documentum business process management does uh, that again the business process management suite content services for sap uh, there is a ready made content services uh, for sap a module available uh, which we used we used e room which is a collaborative platform it's, it's used for uh, manage and secure uh, you know information exchange and there is virtually no, no limit in the uh, you know size of the data that can be exchanged this e room is put and, and it's open to the internet and then we have our own uh, framework which is working over all these things it's called uh, reliance enterprise information management system so it's a kind of uh, uh, you know a building block structure and it's quite flexible quite configurable uh, which adopts to various uh, uh, you know project scenarios so this is what uh, we use for that all these things are more or less configurable i'll say totally configurable not more or less uh, totally configurable so cs4 sap we use for linking the uh, specifications and the commercial documents all unstructured data with sap pr line item so a pr which has uh, multiple line items we can attach the relevant documents directly from the content server so that people working on sap side they also uh, look at uh, a single set of documents and there is no duplicate there is no exchange of data uh we have configurable workflow for the buyer to create the rfq through that workflow so that he just has to you know go through navigate through that particular workflow through a single screen he selects all these uh, uh dates uh, deadline dates etc 
Uh, he selects the co relevant commercial attachments and he has the technical attachments already linked with the PR. So his job is very uh, simple, he just selects that and he says submit. Configurable template in eRoom for creation of eRoom tables. For each RFQ, there is a set of data or metadata which is created with help of the eRoom tables. eRoom discussion threads, so we wanted to eliminate anything that is going through email or any such thing uh, to the extent possible and we said, okay, let's start using the discussion threads so that all relevant users uh, start discussing the queries and other things in the folders with it. Now, how the flow that is now the transform one looks like. So the DEC, Reliance and the same players. But we implemented eRoom for transfer of data between DEC and Reliance. So the MRQ copies, immediately the way, I mean, the moment they put it in the eRoom, it is received by the relevant people within uh, Reliance. We upload in the documentum repository and that upload is also automated now. So when the DEC is put it into the eRoom system, automatically it goes inside relevant place in the uh, documentum repository. The PR is created as soon as this, uh, it is, it is the, the MRQ is uh, uploaded in repository. A notification goes to all the relevant people, including the buyer, and then uh, it creates a PR. The PS few, few days, uh, for each and every transfer. When the RFP package is created, there is a again a workflow and an automated process which creates uh, RFQ uh, relevant RFQ section within eRoom. Now eRoom is exposed to the internet and it's a collaboration medium. So uh, you know as soon as the RFQ is posted, uh, automatically there are various. Uh, uh, sections within that RFQ uh, area within the eRoom are created and those areas are again access controlled. So what we do is in the beginning of the project uh, we ask the project manager as to who all should get access to what and, and that, that depends on what is the project, uh, which one is the project, which is discipline, uh, who is the buyer and various other criteria. So as soon as the RFQ is uh, created the RFQ section, technical discussion and technical section on price commer uh, commercial section, price commercial and price uh, discussion and uh, PO, these are the sections created for that particular RFQ and that's uh, virtually like on the fly. The RFQ is posted and immediately after that the notification goes to all relevant people. The notification goes to the DEC, it goes to the supplier and it goes to all relevant team members of Reliance. So immediately they, came, they come to know uh, as to how it, uh, as, as and when the RFQ is created, or rather any change that happens within the uh, particular RFQ area. So technical offer, price offer, and price offer, all those things, they have to put in the relevant section. All people get this information. Technical queries, these queries happen through the discussion thread. So elimination of email, I not say completely, but whatever is supposed to be recorded, whatever is supposed to be the important information that is, you know, useful for future reference, all these things are uh, done through the technical queries and commercial queries through eRoom. And those are available for anybody who is supposed to uh, respond to the query based on the type of the query or the, of the subject of the query. Then the technical bid evaluation happens, that also is transferred through the eRoom. It's very easy, uh, you know, for the users to uh, actually work on this, quite navigable. Uh, you, uh, the supplier-wise sections are created, like here, it's like some name here, ABC, Prime Limited, XYZ, these are some, some values that you put for the uh, sake of, uh, you know, showing this slide. <laughs> And then it looks like all the metadata of RFQ, which is uh, created by buyer through a BPM, uh, the document of BPM, all those things appear over here. So these are the metadata fields. 
and those folders are over here. And within these folders, there are sections for uh, the discussion threads. Uh, there are a few more things which are uh, also of quite you know useful in nature. Uh, it it helps the supplier to ask for extension in the bid deadline date and approval of the same by the relevant person. It also says whether the uh, whether the supplier work, intends to bid or not. So at a given point in time, all the team members are uh, aware as to what is going on in a particular RFQ. Quickly, the uh, usage uh, statistics, number of projects, 20 of various uh, sizes, uh, number of parties, 1230 users, 1550. We don't give access to all the people working on the project, only the relevant people, those who are supposed to exchange information with the external party, those only get access to it. Number of daily unit logins uh, in excess of 200 plus and uh, number of uh, collaboration sections, which is like all the folders, the RFQ sections, uh, discussion threads, uh, all these put together is 19,000 plus. Uh, so, what we got out of this? The first objective was turnaround time, which was taking a lot of, uh, uh, you know, number of days for exchanging the information has now come down to, you know, almost uh, uh, 10 years. But other than that, the quick configuration of this entire setup suiting the project requirement, it's, it's really quick within, say, two or three days, uh, depending on the uh, you know, uh, data that we receive, uh, we set up the system. Notification immediate and significant process turnaround time. The second is reliability, uh, you know, in terms of right information at right time to the right person. So it's online structured access control and quick retrieval from anywhere through internet. Uh, and it's quite important uh, in the project scenario, uh, you know, where you know, so much of data is flowing here and there, uh, where people are referring to various uh, uh, versions of the data. Here, everybody is looking at the same data. So it's a single source of truth for all concerned. So version integrity, better transparency, and online availability uh, to everybody, even for the historical record. So at the time of handing over the project to the steady state, uh, everything is available at a single state, the single uh, single source. Then disciplined and predefined exchange routes, which is very important uh, because in the project scenario, multiple parties and multiple people are there. Uh, they keep exchanging the information. Uh, though there are project communication uh, links and communication uh, matrices available, there are, you know, quite a time that people will exchange the information uh, with external parties. So here it's discipline, discipline, and predefined exchange route, and the MIS uh, to the management just so, you know, where the, what is the status of all this, uh, what, whatever is happening, the number of RFQs, the hundreds of RFQs which are uh, floated. So uh, this is what. We did on the pre PO side. If there are any questions, uh, we can take that. Thank you. Yeah, so, so uh, in our case, it was done from the access uh, security point of view, it was done by Deloitte. Uh, running to, I think, uh, two months or so for information security perspective. And then we have our own uh, information security team, uh, which, uh, I mean, relies for the Reliance Enterprise. And uh, they keep doing this uh, on a regular basis. So uh, there are quite a few such studies. Useful. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, basically, uh, in all of them, uh, in all these projects, it, it is making differences, uh, 
you know, the, in the initial phase, at least those uh, DECs or external parties uh, were quite uh, apprehensive about this. At, uh, you know, so, <coughs> no, these are pet uh, petrochemical uh, plants, petrochemical. I mean, but this is, I mean, common for any EPC project, uh, whether it's uh, steel or power, and say, anything to do with EP and C. Uh, absolutely, yes. Uh, how much time you require to implement this? Implement uh, this particular, uh, I mean, develop this. Uh, yeah. Uh, see, we have been using Eru for, uh, I mean, e-room as uh, e-room uh, for last for more than five years now. Uh, but this particular thing we developed in uh, approximately, it was a you know progressive uh, uh, sort of a uh, you know project where we started with uh, a particular uh, you know area, and then we kept on automating it. So in all, it took approximately seven months, seven to eight months. But in the first time when we implemented it. Approximately one or two months, and within within the time frame. Okay. Of course, <laughs> there are. I mean, any changes. I mean, uh, uh, you know, it, it requires a lot of uh, efforts to uh, for the users to uh, adopt it, and uh, uh, especially uh, the DECs and uh, uh, the suppliers. I mean, suppliers are uh, what about the DECs? Uh, they were having certain apprehensions, but then, uh, you know, once they went through this user guide and all, uh, they started working on it. And uh, the other thing was we didn't go for big bang approach, otherwise it would have been quite a disaster. So we slowly introduced one by one all the features. Jadi for this session, and uh, they are using Documentum since four or five years now, and this is the one of the project, uh, one of the processes which they have automated using this platform. But there are many others okay, internal processes which has been automated and transformed on Documentum platform. So uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for giving the opportunity. Thank you.